My very special musical guest, Amy Rushes, is an incredible solo artist who found her gospel roots at Bishop Blake's West Angeles Church of God in Christ Choir. Will you please welcome to the helpline, Amy Rushes. It's a good thing to know we have a refuge, don't we? In the time of our storm, our God is with us. And it's just beyond the hills. Come on, everybody, let's worship the Lord. There's a lifting of hands. Here's a lifting of hearts. Here's a lifting of the eyes. has a real deep meaning for you personally. Oh, yes. Tell, yes. tell me a little bit why. Well, there's a lifting. Uh, mm. When I lost my parents. Both parents? Both parents. Uh, within a three month two period? Months, two months. My period. mom died. Two months later, my dad died. And that was my family. I don't have brothers sure. or sisters or a husband or children. So my parents... They were everything to me. And when my dad died, I quit on everything. And I was praying with everything in me to die because I didn't want to be here. But God. How, how did it happen but God, where but God, God brought the deliverance to you and turned your life around? And It was line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here did, a little. Didn't, didn't happen all at oh, once. No, 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 no. Um, it was step by step. Step by step. God brought you out. Little bit by little bit by little bit. And now what would you say to somebody who's suffering with depression right now? Hold yeah. on. Don't give up. Most de- well, you know what? I, I don't know that I would say that, Dr. Cirillo, because I did give up. Yes. But you know what? God was bigger than my give up. <laughs> He was bigger than that. So God didn't let you give up on yourself. No, I mean, he was there all, all along. So if you, if you do give up, if you have, if you're there and you can't pick yourself up, that's okay. Because God can do it. Amen. He, he did it for me and I, I'm nobody that he should do it, do it for. <laughs> yes, you are. You're somebody <laughs> in him. Amen. Let's tell Amy we appreciate her being here. 
My next guest has a story that needs to be told and emulated in today's society. Lakita Garth Wright, she's spoken before millions of teenagers in live assemblies across the country talking about sexual abstinence, holding off until marriage. She also practices what she preaches, her first kiss coming on her wedding day at the age of 36. You gotta take a look at this. My name is Lakita Garth Wright, and I actually um, speak to about a half million young people across the United States and around the world every year. Usually my topic of discussion is abstinence. I teach people to wait until you say, I do, which means I do you, you do me, and we don't do nobody else. That is what I do means, okay? My mom raised five of us. She was a single parent. She was widowed. My mother and my father, when he was alive, they were very strict disciplinarians. And everything was just very, you know, you do what you're told. You know, you can't be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people doing the wrong thing. We were raised in a godly home, but there wasn't a relationship with God that was emphasized. I went to USC, and that is when I encountered Christians for the first time. And I went to a Bible study, met this girl. She led me to the Lord. It changed my life forever. Through my life's journey and walking the walk of Christ, I've done the pageant thing. I was Miss Black California. I ran up to Miss Black America. Um, I ran AC Green's um, Athletes for Abstinence program. I've spoken before the Senate and Senate subcommittees uh, several times. I speak to about a half million young people across the United States and around the world on abstinence from sex. One of the first things the Holy Spirit told me when I became a Christian is he said, you will be seen before the eyes of many perform for an audience of one. So no matter what interview that I'm engaging in, I pretend God is the one looking through that camera lens. I'm gonna have to give an account to him. I'm relatively newly married. His name is Jeffrey Wright. And so all those years I was praying for Mr. Wright, I married Mr. Wright. And we have a little boy named Justin and that makes him just right. I was looking forward to a complication-free pregnancy. That didn't happen. I honestly didn't think I was going to make it because it was just that serious. And then the delivery was worse than the pregnancy. 36 hours of hard labor, two epidurals, and a spinal tap. None of them worked. And I would do it all again because he is a blessing. And I believe that my best days are yet to come. My passion for young people is to tell them, do not take lightly your youth. This is really the time for young people to run without, you know, any kind of inhibitions for Christ and his kingdom. <laughs> Please welcome Lakita to the helpline. <laughs> God bless you, Lakita. God bless you, sweetheart. Welcome to the Helpline. Oh, well, thank you. It is a blessing just to be here, just to be here in your studio. Thank you so much. You know, you chose abstinence, mm -hmm. and that's what really has made you famous besides being Miss California. Uh -huh. Tell us why you chose abstinence. Well, I grew up in a community. Money Magazine said it was one of the most dangerous places in America to live. Oh, Fifth Avenue in New York City, no, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was in the methamphetamine capital of the world. Wow. <laughs> and so, uh, when also one of the worst places to raise children. In the midst of that children. environment, mm -hmm. you chose this incredible lifestyle? Absolutely, because I looked around and I said, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be like a statistic in my community. The girls, 15, walking around. Stomach sticking out, talking about where my baby daddy at, you know. I said I had enough of that and, and, you know, members of my family. I didn't need it in the community, and I wanted something different. And it wasn't until I was visiting my grandfather, who uh, lived in a small town in Alabama, and he told me, you know, the first time I ever kissed your grandmother's when the minister said, you may now kiss your bride. Oh, my. And so they had, they were married over. What an over, example. It was. It was a great example. Yeah. And they were married over 60 years and had 12 kids. Woo! That's right. <laughs> so you know after they said, I do, Morris, yeah. they did. 
But the last <laughs> thing he said was the thing I remember the most, and it really set the stage, and I didn't know it at the time. He said, you know, I don't know anything about any other woman, and I don't want to, because your grandmother, she was the stuff. And I said, dude, that's what I want. Yeah. To talk about, we didn't really talk about sex. We talked yeah. about his relationship with my grandmother, and I said, that is what I want. And this little old man, you know, who never went to middle school, he finished sixth grade, that was it. He, he worked in the fields, he took care of his family, never preached in a pulpit. He never, you know, did anything that would be extraordinary in the world's eyes, but he didn't know that his testimony, the conversation he would have with his granddaughter would impact the lives of millions of young people around the world. How do you teach that when you know that half of the people that you're talking mm -hmm. to have already violated it. Well, the amazing thing is, is that um, I, have, I wrote a book called The Naked Truth About Sex. I know, I got your book right here. And, well, thank you. And we're going to we're gonna offer it on Helpline here. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking together, you can go to helplinetv.com and you can get this book. I mean, to tell you, it is the naked truth. And you're gonna wanna naked. It, and it's you're, naked. And you're gonna wanna hear about it. Actually, a couple of the president's aides and many people from the Department of Health said it was the Bible of abstinence education. So mm. if anyone needed to know anything, know how to teach it, that was the book. But of course, there's only one Bible. But if you wanna know the, the source for abstinence, that would be it. Now, you you said that a third of teen girls contract a sexually transmitted disease. A third. Um, it's nearly a third of high school girls between the ages of 14 and 19 have a sexually transmitted disease, and a lot of people just really don't understand how prevalent it is. One half of all sexually, sexually active, active adults. single adults have at least one STD. Of uh, the young people that are coming up now, half of all young people will have at least one STD in their lifetime. Um, people think AIDS is the worst thing that can happen, but actually AIDS is not the only STD that can kill you. It's not even the most contagious. And there's one out right now, HPV, human papillomavirus, that 20 times more people have this STD than have HIV. And nearly twice as many women died of, of HPV last year than died of HIV AIDS. And no one is talking How about it. How do you quickly, in just a few minutes, mm -hmm. on this helpline, with millions of people around the world watching us right now. Mm -hmm. How do you teach abstinence? How well, do you the, teach it? The thing is, is I, have to, I truly believe if you're not modeling what you're teaching, you're teaching something else. And I believe that the church has to be the primary source to preach the truth and to preach the word of God. Okay. Not just in words, but preach it in deed. Let's hear the reason why So it's have, time for the church yes. to stand up and speak up. Absolutely. I could have written this book. I'm, I'm the chairman of the board of the largest abstinence education organization that exists on the planet. There's a quarter billion of nearly a quarter billion dollars for abstinence education. I could have written it, made money for the secular world, but I wrote this for the church. Because the reality is, is that when the church gets a call, the world gets a flu. Mm. And the reason why we are in the condition that we are in right now is mm. because, the, because the church needs to walk the walk right. as well as talk the talk. That's, oh my Lord. Now, I, I want to ask you just a couple of quick mm -hmm. questions. Explain the four steps in decision making regarding abstinence. Well, the thing is, is that the majority of people don't make uh, conscious, rational decisions, it's particularly young people, brain development doesn't end until the age of 25. It's pretty much they respond according to what's coming up. So we teach decision making. One, you have to know your options and know your consequences. Um, the second is okay. make a decision. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was reading this Bible this morning. What was the name of this book? The Bible. And it said, um, <laughs> it said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Right. So you have to make a decision every day about what you're going to do. The third step in decision making is find other people who are going to support your decision. Okay. One of the lies and truths clothing that we uncover in the naked truth is the lie of everybody's doing it and peer pressure. Okay. Peer pressure is a media creation. The naked truth is misery loves company. And you have got to find other people like Daniel did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You've got to find other people who believe the way you do, live the way you do, and surround yourself with those people.
And you've already answered my next question, yeah. why you believe the excuse of peer pressure is not legitimate. Well, we think that peer pressure, and, and that peer pressure is actually the number one reason young people give for getting involved with not just sex, but drugs, alcohol, violence, and every other risky behavior. And reality is, is that peer pressure is a media creation, you know? And the, the thing is... A media is, creation. It is a media creation, you know, that somehow you can't stand up to the pressure. And growing up, I had basically one friend through middle school and high school, and we were ostracized because we weren't putting out, we made good grades, we didn't get involved in a lot of stuff. But the reality is, if young people knew the, the potential that they had the, uh, for success and greatness, they would drop some of the base creatures that they call their friends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it is other adults who have to live that and show that to them. So with peer pressure, it's not peer pressure, it is a lack of character. That is the problem. And when they have been pressured by the wrong people at the wrong place at the wrong time, they just cave in. But when you know Jesus, when you know Jesus, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wow. I've worked in Hollywood. I've stood before the Senate, testified before the Congress. I've, I've debated the Surgeon General with people being 20, 30 years my elder. And people, aren't you afraid? Aren't you nervous? No. Because I don't have an army of one. I have the one. And he is Jesus Christ. And he stands before me. And when you have that and you have the truth, then there is nothing that you can't withstand. Amen. Please go to helplinetv.com and order the book, The Naked Truth. Thank you one more time, Nikita. No, thank you. Love you, sweetheart. God bless you. Very much. God bless you. I want to encourage all the pastors, please take this message. Speak up in your church as never before. Our people want to hear it. And you know, Morris, a pastor that's watching right now, or if you're watching and you know a pastor, go to the website, helplinetv.com. You can get a copy of The Naked Truth. Share it with your and pastor. And they can also download the interview. Watch the interview. You could download it. You could send a link of that interview to your pastor. There are incredible resources on HelplineTV.com. And I want to encourage you, Morris, during that whole interview, these phones have just been off the hook, and we've been getting incredible prayer requests by email. And, you know, you may have a prayer need, like this dear lady. I won't say her name because she wanted this confidential. But you can go to HelplineTV.com to send your prayer request. She said, please pray that the Lord would heal my broken heart. Oh. My husband of 26 years left me a year ago for another woman. Now, this line is a killer. My husband was a pastor. Oh, my. Oh, my. He is so lost now that he acts like a different person. This whole thing has been devastating for me and our two grown sons. You know, the Bible says that to whom you give your spirit to, that spirit takes over. That's right. And so... She's asking, please pray for God to comfort and heal us and that God's perfect will would be done in our lives. And we're going to pray because all of these needs that you see here, when the program is over, we go into deep intercessory prayer, lay our hands on every one of your requests, and we bring them to the Lord. So if you've been waiting during this whole program to go to the phone, go to your computer, now is your time. HelplineTV.com, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Take a quick look at this. HelplineTV.com is your personal resource for prayer. With one click of the mouse, you have the ability to request prayer for whatever circumstance you're going through today. I Care Prayer Ministers are available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. HelplineTV.com also features all previous episodes of Helpline. With just a click of your mouse, you'll be inspired by the incredible music and interview guest and the teachings of Morris Cervillo, or find complete listings of new Helpline episodes airing on television in your area. You may also read the miraculous answers to prayer from Helpline viewers to encourage you in your own prayer life. Morris has also recorded a series of very specific prayers that speak directly to so many of the people's needs that he has encountered in his 61 years of ministry. For family, Father, I pray that their relationship in their marriage and in their family, 
husband and wife and children together will receive your healing restoration. For finances. God is interested in the prosperity of our being, our well-being. Be blessed, my friend. Receive the financial victory that you need in Jesus' name. And finally, find Sweet Dreams every night through a unique nightly email devotional from Morris and Teresa Cirillo, exclusively available through HelplineTV.com, your personal resource for prayer. And now, let's return to Morris Cirillo and Helpline. My special thanks today go out to Flo, to Lakita, wow, and to my special musical guest, Amy Rushes, the Helpline Singers, the orchestra, Phil Christensen, for everyone being a part of Helpline today. And I want to thank you for sharing your burdens and your cares. The phones have been just literally going off of those and the receivers. My friends, you're the reason Helpline is on the air. In fact, our Helpline phones are open. Did you know this? 24 hours a day. So if you didn't get through, you can write that number down on the screen. Call again, call again, send us an email, let us help you. We want God to lift that burden and give you the miracle that you need. Well, until next week, remember this, don't you dare look to the bigness of your needs. Look to the bigness of your God. We'll see you. Friends, 2008 is the year of the Bible on Helpline. God's Victorious Army, the financial breakthrough and spiritual warfare Bible holds the answers to 100% victory. This King James Bible is a $120 value, but today you can receive your very own financial breakthrough and spiritual warfare Bible for the incredible low gift price of just $49.95, including shipping and handling. Simply call the toll-free number on your screen. Go to HelplineTV.com or write Morris Cirillo Helpline, San Diego, California, 92186. In the United Kingdom, call free phone at 0800-316-0795. For all other international countries, simply call country code 44-1442-288-547. Helpline is a presentation of Morris Cirillo World Evangelism, San Diego, California.